There she is. Ooh. Heading to meet the buyer here now. Last couple looks at this bad boy. This has been his sickest bike ever. It's gonna be sad to see her go. Got my co-pilot with me. What's up? Sad to see this thing go, man. Well, the deal's done. Bike's gone. Still got my blonde dog, though. Yep. That's Stark money, baby. Let's go. Yeah, hello? Hey, is this Stark Bark? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, I was just hoping I could uh, finally get that, that Stark Bark after uh, waiting two and a half years. Oh, only have to wait another month? Okay. And I got to go drive to pick it up in Salem? Okay, I'll do that. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to let you know I have the down payment right here. And, uh, yep, I'll pick it up as soon as it's ready. Thanks, man. Okay, bye. All right. Today's the day. Driving to Power Motorsports to go pick up the Stark Varg. Uh, it's, like, currently blowing snow. And, uh pretty snowy over the Sanium Pass it's looking like so on a bit of a hero journey today it's feeling like uh, absolutely worst conditions to drive three hours but uh, hey you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes um, and uh, I'm fired up to get that start so It'll be an interesting day but yeah let's go Woo! just amazing weather today about 10 minutes from my house on the highway oh boy might be a long day all right we made it hell yes Oh, baby. There she is. Oh, look how mean this thing looks. I'm going to attempt to uh, get this thing charging. It only came like 25% charge from uh, from the dealership, so looks like this goes to the bike. It comes with a 220 amp plug, and I bought a an adapter to go to 110 just because I don't have a 220 plug in my garage yet. So plug it into the wall first. Okay, you can hear it kicking on, doing its thing. Here it shows that it's currently charging and it's at 31%. It says charging current eight amps. I'll run through some details on this. I put down a deposit about two and a half years ago. On yeah, finally got it today. It's February 29th, 2024. As you can see, I opted into the handbrake instead of the foot brake. Everyone's kind of like, oh, you're you're crazy. Like I would never run that. I have a Suron, been running that for a year or two. 
really got used to uh, the rear brake on the handlebars. I think it's going to be a pretty insane bike. I, I, it's it's going to be a full cheater bike, I think. Not having to shift and having both your rear and your front brake on the handlebars. And I opted for the kickstand because it wasn't any extra money and I figured I could just take it off if I didn't want it on there. Uh, and I went with a 18 inch rear wheel because 90% of what I do is riding trails. You got that fatty tire on there with 18 inch rear wheel. This thing's gonna be an absolute trail beast. Yeah, just the details on these things are insane. It's got this like forged carbon uh, around what would be your gas tank. Um, and it's just, everything is so like slim and like comes together like just incredible. Uh, and then it's got, this is actually uh, gold inlay, like real gold Stark logo. Um, which is kind of insane. The triple clamps look crazy on this thing. Um, they come set with springs for the, your certain weight within like 10 to 15 pounds. So if you're 135 pounds, you can have them spring your bike for that. If you're 225 pounds, they'll spring your bike for that. So they sprung it for my weight. Just all the customization on these things is crazy. And then you get to obviously pick the color. I went with the dark gray, forest gray or whatever it's called. At the dealership today, they had the other colors. They had white and red. And the white was more like a super light gray, which looked actually super sick. Um, but I'm still uh, happy with my decision on the on the forest gray. Yeah, the foot pegs on these things look so, so nice. They're like super wide and sharp and they are like open. So you're not gonna get a ton of mud clogged in there. And then you got Brembo brakes which come on all the Austrian motorcycles, which are top of the line brakes. This throttle feels crispy. And then uh, your air filters in here, just kidding, there's no air filter. And then your exhaust is right there, no exhaust. Yeah, this thing looks badass. Unfortunately, it's snowing today, like all over from Central Oregon all the way to Salem. So I, I was gonna go ride it after I picked it up today, but uh, that didn't happen, so. <laughs> Full tool kit. That is unreal. Look at this. That's uh, probably $300 in tools right there. This something with a little, little towel. Clean off your screen. So she's at 40% now. So first and foremost, general thoughts and feelings on this bike. I grew up riding moto. So I've ridden every single type of gas bike there is really out there. Uh, most recent bike was a Husky 300 two-stroke. Before that was a Honda 450, because I liked riding tracks, but nowadays I just mainly ride trails. So that's why I went to the uh, Husky 300. It was the funnest bike I've ever ridden. Uh, I did temporarily sell that bike in order to get this thing because it's expensive. I bought it for 12,100. Yeah, I'm, I'm a motorhead. Like uh, I'm not like a full electric guy, even though I do have a Suron and that is kind of the reason reason why I was so sold on this bike. I knew it was gonna be amazing. So I don't think you have to choose one or the other, gas versus electric. I'm stoked on this thing, but you know, I do wanna get another one, Husky Two Strokes or KTM 300. Just the smell and the feel, once I sold my 450 and bought a 300, got back on the Two Stroke, I just remembered how much fun Two Strokes are. And uh, there's nothing like a Two Stroke screaming out in the woods. Just that vibration is so fun. So. Uh, just start off with that. I like gas bikes as well, but uh, just general feeling on this bike when I sit on it feels pretty close to a 450. Uh, I would say it looks a little bit skinnier, feels a little bit skinnier, um, but it feels good. Um, it, the suspension does feel a little stiff, um, but I haven't messed with the clickers at all yet. I might have to get the suspension redone sooner than I thought. M9. He's a local guy here in Central Oregon, M9 suspension, best dude around. Uh, I'll definitely take it to him uh, pretty quickly, um, but I like to ride stock bikes to see how they feel first before getting the suspension done, because then you really notice the difference. There's no point in putting everything on before you even ride it, and then you don't even know what the stock base feels like. So, I, like I said, I had a Suron. I rode that thing for um, about a year now, and the feeling of, of riding silent out on a trail by yourself uh, it's pretty freaking cool, honestly. If you, you know, have it, say, a track in your backyard and you have neighbors around, 
you can ride these things all day. You can't ride a 450 like that with uh, neighbors around. I mean, you can, but they're gonna hate you. Uh, that's a huge positive with this thing. My goal is to get a little more property uh, eventually and build a track, like ride around neighbors, have a uh, full on outdoor supercross track and just be sending on this thing and nobody even knows. So when I was out on the, the Saran or the Talaria, like, you know, you're out there, it's silent. There's no clutch. There's no shifting. You have, you know, the same as this set up. You front brake on your right hand and as a normal dirt bike does. And then you have your rear brake in your left hand right here instead of on the foot. I don't know, there's something to just about flowing on single track with all those combinations that makes it so much fun. I was completely sold once I started riding this around. So. And yeah, you just kind of have like this super, it sounds corny, but like super peaceful feeling when you're out there with no noise, just just ripping and um, nobody knows you're there. So that, as you can see, I elected to go with the handbrake instead of the foot brake. A couple reasons for that, because I've been riding the Suron with the same setup and I can feel the advantages of it. When you're out trail riding, you don't even really have to think. Once you get used to it, you have so much control right here, instead of having to take your foot off of the foot peg in the optimal position and hit the brake. For anyone that's been riding forever is wired to do that. It's not a really big deal. I enjoy the foot brake. But I actually really, really enjoyed the handbrake too. Um, and that goes into the next thing is that it's gonna be a huge advantage. Always staying on the balls of your feet instead of going to hit that rear brake and taking your foot off of the optimal riding position. And same thing with the left side. Not taking your foot off the peg to shift. You always are gonna be locked in on your toes. Just imagine coming in like racing moto, coming into a right hand turn. Instead of get to hit your rear brake to go into that left or right hand turn, it doesn't matter. You can just stay in the optimal position on your feet and be dragging that rear brake instead of taking your foot off and losing this kind of like control. So that's another reason. The third reason is just the aesthetic and like balance of the bike. I think it'd be kind of weird to have your front brake here and your rear brake here like normal but then you have nothing on the left side of the bike you have no clutch and no shifter so i thought it'd be more of a balanced bike to have just front brake back brake feet in the optimal position that's my basic reasoning for going with the handbrake also i've had experience with the suron yeah i'm a traditional moto guy i want to go up in the air and hit that rear brake tap but um, I think you'll get used to it pretty quick being in the hand. A couple last things with the rear brake on the hand versus the foot is if I don't like this, I can order rear foot brake for this thing. So that's one thing. And then imagine if you were out trail riding, you were stuck on like a hill climb, you know, something super gnarly or something technical. Instead of having just your front brake here and your rear brake here, and then having to put only this foot down, instead you can put both feet down and have both brakes locked up in order to get out of that position or keep riding. So. That's just another thought that comes to my mind with the advantage of having the rear brake right here instead of on your right foot. Another really uh, badass thing about this bike is that it's fully waterproof. Um, they say you can fully submerge the whole entire thing underwater and it'd be totally fine. Um, you can't leave it underwater because it's not built like a submarine. Eventually water will start to seep into seals and stuff. But that's pretty cool. The phone that comes as the display screen, also waterproof military grade as well. Pressure wash it, they say probably shouldn't pressure wash it, but it's uh, waterproof, drop proof, it's military grade, so that's pretty cool. Another thing on Stark's website is they suggest to not store the bike permanently in under 50 degrees. So if you live somewhere cold like I do in the winter, if you don't have a heated garage, I wouldn't leave it out there because um, it could possibly degrade the life of your battery. Um, I don't think it would um, because uh, other people who have had the Alta uh, electric dirt bikes said that um, the battery life on those things never degraded over the five, six years. Um, batteries on those stayed just as good as day one, super crispy. So I would imagine it would be the same on these, but I'm gonna be cautious in the winter if I don't have a heat out in my garage, I'm gonna bring it inside or Put a heated blanket over it or something to keep it warm so another huge positive to this bike is um instead of all the regular maintenance that a normal dirt bike comes with you basically have similar maintenance to a mountain bike you have to change your gearbox oil like after you break it in and then you could probably i don't know go year um then you have all your uh, normal mountain bike maintenance things you have servicing your suspension um keeping that going good then you have your chassis you know like your linkage bearings in there you have to service those 
grease them up every six months, whatever, however much you ride. Then you have your chain, you know, you might run through a chain in 50 hours. Um, although the chain on this is super high quality O-ring chain, it looks like it's gonna last a long time. And then tires, so that's it. Um, no more changing pistons, uh, stretching out valves, um, all that shit that you have to deal with. I like working on dirt bikes, but when it comes to that higher end maintenance, like doing a top end or bottom end on a four stroke, I'm not doing that. It's just too much time, effort, and I've never done it. So that's a huge plus with these things. Another amazing thing about the Stark, it seems, is that you have about um, five different bikes packed into one um, with the adjustability of the power and the engine braking. So you can set this thing all the way down to 10 horsepower. It has five different modes here. Mode one, you could set as 10 horsepower um, with however much engine braking you want to where it just is, brrr, you know, super slow and your girlfriend who's never ridden a dirt bike could ride it. Um, wouldn't get whiskey throttle and, and kill herself. So, um, or you can run all the way up to 60 horsepower, which seems faster than a newer for a new 450. You know, they're right around 60 horsepower, but being electric with that instant torque, I think is going to feel faster than 60 horsepower on a gas engine. So, you have you know basically the range of anything from a 50 cc dirt bike all the way up to a 450 cc dirt bike packed into one. Stark also mentions that the battery range on these is similar to a full tank of gas on a modern 450. So I don't know what that would be on trails 40, 50 miles. Hopefully that's that's what I'm hoping for. That's all I really care about is the range. I will ride it on tracks occasionally, but um, just a lot more good trails around me than tracks. So that's what I've been riding get into a couple of the specs on the bike um, the wheels on this are Stark's own made wheels in their factory come with Pirelli tires on them the, the tires look really sweet comes with a 120 in the rear because I went with the 18 inch rear wheel so you got that fatty tire for riding trails um, stuff like that and then they come with black anodized spokes which is pretty cool because I've never seen that on a uh, modern 450 stock from the factory black spokes pretty rad black rims and silver hubs look super clean I really like the look of that then you got KYB suspension front and rear, which is kind of top of the line uh, spring uh, modern suspension on uh, motocross bikes nowadays. So all of this is on uh, Stark's website, but to uh, drain and refill your gear oil, all you got to do, pull this drain bolt right here. And then to refill, you pull this off and it has a leveling uh, bolt right here. So you fill the fluid until it pours out of here, cap this and cap that. Next is the foot pegs. Um, like I mentioned before, super wide, uh, sharp. The way they set these up, you literally can just pull this pin and out and you don't have to mess with uh, trying to get that, keep that spring loaded while you're pushing the pin through. Pull this peg out, the spring's still loaded in the foot peg. I don't know how they do it because I haven't taken it off yet, but you literally just put it back on, screw the bolt back through. So if you're tightening the chain um, on this thing, all you have to do is loosen the rear axle and there's a, basically a star nut back here and it has a click. So if your chain is four clicks loose, you go click, 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 click on the right and same on the left and they're exactly lined up as. Another thing on this bike is the kickstand. Like I said, it came, it wasn't any extra cost so I just got it. I don't like it because when you put the bike on the kickstand, it's super low, like it's almost gonna fall over. I don't like the look of that. Um, that's just a first world complaint here. Um, something I can complain about. I do really like the actual bike stand that it comes with, you know, the chargers integrated in there. Um, got this lip on the top with this nice rubber pad that just makes the bike sit really, really neutral, really great. I really like it. The only thing I don't like about the stand is gonna be hauling it around to a track or whatever, putting it in your, in your truck. It's pretty heavy. So that's the only downfall I'd say is the weight of this stand. Other, other than that, it's badass looking and seems very functional. So. so I'll show you real quick what it looks like when it's on the kickstand. See how it's way laned over like that? To me, it looks like it's gonna fall over. It seems really, really sturdy and there's probably a reason why they did that. It just looks like it's gonna fall over. I don't know why I don't like it. See, it just looks a lot more leaned over than a traditional kickstand. So one of my small complaints. Kind of just show you real quick, turning this thing on and off. So you, over here, you have your power button, your mapping switches. So basically, you just hold the power button. Comes on, blinks. And then as soon as you hit this bottom mapping switch, the display comes on and shows you I'm in map five and I have 90% battery. This shows your RPMs and like the torque being put on the bike. If we go into home mode, this is what it looks like. You have your stats, 
which basically shows you distance 0 0.08, airtime 0, 0.0. Oh, that's l losing my core score a bit there. Uh, max speed 32 miles an hour. That was in the parking lot at the dealership. And then uh, rides it shows, you know, I rode it in the at the dealership here and then at my house. And then I don't know what that is, but it shows all your rides every time the bike's on and riding. Then you have your modes here. So here it shows all your modes. So mode one, I have set 10 horsepower and no engine braking. Mode two, 20 horsepower, 20 engine braking, all the way, you can go all the way up to 100. Mode three, 30 horsepower, 41 engine braking. Mode four, 45 uh, horsepower, 80 regenerative braking. I don't think I'd run it that high. Mode five, 55 horsepower, 49 regenerative braking. So you can also scroll through them like this or click through here. Go through a few of the different modes. I have it set as mode one in 10 horsepower, mode two in 20, three in 30, four in 40, and five in 50. And then you could even go up to 60 in a different mode if you wanted. But I'm just gonna go through mode one. Mode two. 20 horsepower, mode three. Holy shit. Mode four. Mode five. The torque on that is insane. And then here is a trails app. I'm guessing it'd be kind of similar to like something like Strava or something like that, where it shows you all the trails and you know, your times and stuff. It says it won't, it'll only be included in the next app update. And then here you can order all of the parts that you need for the bike. Any part that is on this bike, you can order it straight here off the bike. Um, which is pretty crazy, um, really cool. Um, yeah, and you go to settings, it shows your bike, 60 horsepower, force gray, who owns it, appearance, um, length, I changed this from kilometers to miles because I'm in the US. Yeah, then you have your owner's manual down here as well. So yeah, that's basically it. This thing pops in and out super easy. Um, like I said, this is a military grade Android phone. It's got the Stark Future, Future logo on there. Probably a super sick camera on there too. You can put phone service on this if you want. I'm not an Android guy, so it'll probably just be in here. That's what behind the bars looks like. And then literally, boom, hear that click. And then here you can just click off the monitor if you want. And then to turn off the bike, just hold that power button until it turns off and you hear it click off. So I think that's about it. Um, really excited to ride this thing. It's uh, just been snowing here in Central Oregon. I'm kind of losing my mind, but uh, I'm going to get out it on it soon enough. And uh, then I will have some real life feedback on how this thing rides. So I just think this bike looks amazing. And uh, yeah, probably put some graphics on it sooner than later so that I can keep the plastics from getting too roached. But I think it looks really cool just the way it is, so. That covers most of the overview on the bike. I uh, wanna know what you guys think. Do you like the new electric coming into the motocross industry or do you hate it? Uh, I'm personally excited to ride this thing and I think it's gonna open up a lot more um, possibilities for dirt bike riding in general and um, I'll be putting out another video in the next week once I actually get to ride this thing and test it out and give you my feedback then so stay tuned for that and we'll see you in the next one stay stoked